Hello everyone, my name is Michael Kellerman. I'm a fourth year music student at Wilfrid Laurier University. One of my final tasks for this program is a capstone project, which acts as a final culminating project for music students. This project is meant to showcase the musicianship and creative voices of music students. For my capstone, I have crafted a program around Balkan music in various contexts. These include folk, classical, and opera music. Now, given my Croatian heritage, there is a strong emphasis on the music of that country. However, I felt that a focus on Balkan music would provide me with a wider net and a more diverse array of music. The works being performed today embrace the main theme of that program. Before getting into the first piece, I would like to give a huge thanks to my fellow collaborators, my professors, personal friends, and my family for helping to make this project possible. It truly means a lot. All right, so to begin with um, is a composer named Marko Tajcevic. Uh, he was a composer, musician, teacher, conductor, and writer of Serbian nationality. As a composer, he wrote for various instruments and musical ensembles, primarily working in miniature forms. He was even regarded by critics as a superb master of the miniature. His music, in particular his piano music, was also influenced by the folk traditions of the Balkans. One of his most famous piano works is his suite of seven Balkan dances, which utilizes folk melodies and traditions in miniature forms and has even undergone variations for chamber ensembles. Each individual dance in this suite evokes various instruments, rhythms, moods, and dance styles of the Balkan regions. Each, uh, it was also this suite that helped to establish Tajcevic as one of the most important Yugoslavian composers of his generation.
feel I would be remiss not to include Béla Bartók as part of this program. Bartók was widely regarded as one of the most important Hungarian composers and ethnomusicologists of the 20th century. He was a composer whose music was also heavily influenced by folk traditions. This collection of pieces, titled Romanian Folk Dances, is another suite of miniature dances for piano. Bartók takes on dance forms used in Romanian folk music and even pulls from seven Romanian folk tunes from Transylvania for this suite. And then after that, I'll be playing a short work from Armenian-American composer Alan Hovanes, one of the most eclectic and prolific figures in 20th century classical music. Macedonian Mountain Dance was composed in 1937 and makes use of folk rhythms found in Macedonian music. While not a wholly authentic representation of Macedonian folk music, the piece showcases an understanding of tropes found within the music, such as the musical scales and unorthodox rhythms. Enjoy.
from classical music's most well-known figures is Dora Pejacevic. She was born into an aristocratic family of nobles in 1885. Dora received musical training at an early age and was recognized as a prodigious musician and composer in her own right. She began composing when she was 12 years old, largely self-taught, and began to set many milestones for Croatian classical music. These included being the first Croatian composer to write a concerto, introducing the orchestral song to Croatian music, and having works performed by major soloists of her time in locations such as Budapest, Vienna, Prague, and Dresden. Furthermore, larger figures in classical music, such as world-renowned conductor Arthur Nikisch, have expressed interest in her work. Although she embodied many of the stylistic influences of her late romantic contemporaries such as Brahms, Dvorak, and Bruckner, her catalog nonetheless features a strongly crafted and colorful idiom. In this program, we'll be exploring two pieces of hers, uh, Erinnerung, or Remembrance, for piano, and then Megan will be joining me to perform a movement, a movement from the Slavic Sonata in B-flat minor for flute and piano.
away from classical mid material for a little bit, I'd like to talk about a style of Croatian vocal music called klapa. So this is a form of typically a cappella or multi-part singing analogous to part songs or barbershop quartets. The word klapa itself roughly translates to a group of friends in Croatian. Traditionally, Traditionally, klapa groups can feature around four to 12 singers divided into four sections, bass, baritone, tenor two, and the lead tenor one, who sings and conducts everyone else. The groups typically contained older male voices, although the style has evolved to include younger voices, as well as even all female and mixed klapa groups. For this next song, I would like to present an example of klapa performance. Additionally, oh, um, Additionally, texts in klapa music often centered around love, wine, or grapes, the sea, and one's homeland. So I would like to use this next number as an opportunity to give a demonstration of the klapa style. to Will A, Will M, and Spencer. <laughs> so now we move on to a different component of this presentation focused on Croatian opera and operetta. While Croatian operas are nowhere near as globally dominant as the operas of the likes of Puccini, Mozart, Verdi, 
etc., many have still seen success in their home country. Croatian operas themselves were often reliant on national folklore as inspiration for the stories and music, such as the ones we're about to hear today. We'll begin with an aria from Ivo Tjarković's operetta Splitske Aquarel, or The Split Aquarel. Set in a village in the town of Split in 1926, during the interwar period between the end of World War I and the beginning of World War II. Briefly put, Yugoslavia as a state was formed in 1918 after the collapse of Austro-Hungary following World War I and reached a point years later where Italian expansionism threatened the state. This operetta is meant to portray a sense of camaraderie that could still occur in the midst of underlying adversity, especially in that time period. Set in a village in the town of Split, the operetta is dedicated to how successful and less successful small people live, laugh, uh, love, long, and hope. The operetta itself is more focused on light-hearted vignettes and characters rather than a set story. In the case of this aria, there is a focus on the young love between two people, Tonchi and Maritza, as the latter professes her love for the, ma the latter, or the former. Joining me on this stage for this aria will be Danielle. Thank you. 
this next aria comes from arguably Croatia's most successful opera, Eros Ono Gasreta, which translates to Ero the Joker, or Ero from the Other World. It's based on a folk tale and set in a village near a mountain region. This comic opera tells the story of Micha, a mischievous character from a neighboring village who has duped the people of this other village into thinking that he's a man come down from heaven. So this aria is featured in act one of the opera when Micha makes up this fable to the village people. So I will now have Sam, Sophie, and Danielle join me on stage.
So to close the program this afternoon, we'll finish with two more pieces that are connected to each other, one from folk music and the other from classical music. A composer by the name of Franz Josef Haydn represents a classical influence. Anyone who, virtually anyone who has done courses in music theory and history should be familiar with Haydn, as he's well established as one of the largest figures in the world of classical music, nicknamed the father of the string quartet and the father of the symphony. One particular feature of his works that I've always find, found intriguing was his quotations of folk music incorporated into many of his compositions. Much of Haydn's background knowledge of folk music was instilled in him by his father, Matthias, a folk musician. In addition, a Croatian ethnologist, Franjo Kuhac, proposed the idea that Haydn's music abounds in Croatian folk tunes, it, as seen in works such as his last two symphonies, and even the German national anthem. Today, however, I want to highlight the shared relationship between one tune, O Jelena Jelena, and the finale of his London Symphony, number 104. I would like to call up Ante and Victoria to the stage to perform O Jelena Jelena, and then joining me in the performance of an arrangement of this of Haydn will be Tony.
being able to attend this presentation, as well as, once again, a massive thank you to the musicians who were able to take time out of this.